Hi, this is Ms. Fitzmaurice, and this video is an explanation of the problem on page 21 of your Unit 5 packet, um, which is 1974B1. Okay, so this problem says a pendulum consisting of a small heavy ball with mass m um, at the end of a string length l is released from a horizontal position. When the ball is at point P, so that's right here, the string forms an angle theta with the horizon as shown. And so in part A, it says in the space below, draw a force body diagram showing all the forces at point P. Okay, so this is fairly straightforward. Okay. The only forces acting on our ball are from gravity and from the tension in the rope. So we have F tension and we have gravity going down FG. So that's part A. In part B, it says determine the speed of the ball at point P. Now, to do this, we have to use conservation of energy. So we have sigma E naught is equal to sigma E. Okay, at the beginning, it's released from rest. Um, so it has no kinetic. We'd say it really has gravitational potential only. So it has UG naught. And at the end, we might as well set this height equal to zero right now so we'll say it only has kinetic energy okay so the trick is going to be once again in the geometry finding this height okay hopefully your brain is saying Sokotoa okay um, we know that this height right here is the same as this height right here Okay, and this height, so the length of the string does not change. Our length will still be L. So this height right here will be L times sine theta. That's our height. Okay, so we have MGH naught is equal to one half M v squared. Our m's go away. Um, we're solving for v, so I'm going to bring the 2 over, get rid of that 2, and I have v squared is equal to 2gh naught. I go ahead and take a square root, so v is equal to the square root of 2gh naught, and I'm going to put my L sine theta in for H, so V is equal to the square root of 2 G L sine theta. All right, so in part C, we want to determine the tension in the string when the ball has reached point P. And to do that, it's going to be much easier if we define our axes so that our x-axis is towards the center of the circle. Okay, What that means is that tension we don't have to break up into parts, but we do have to break gravity up into fgx and fgy. So I'm going to redraw this force body diagram and alright, so I've redrawn this force body diagram and notice that our x-axis, I've labeled it in orange, and our force body diagram is in green, and we're splitting up FG into FGX and FGY. Um, the only component of our gravity force that we care about is going to be FGX because it is in the X direction and our acceleration is in the X direction. Okay, so writing out Newton's second law. We have sigma fx equals max, and because this thing is swinging around in a circle, we know that ax is equal to vt squared divided by r. Okay, so 
On the left hand side of our equation, we have right minus left, so we have our tension force, that's what we're trying to solve for, minus FGX is equal to MVT squared over R. And remember, our radius is the length of our string, so I'm going to put MVT squared over L. Okay. Now I'm going to rearrange our equation, so I have MG. x plus m vt squared over l. Um, fgx is on the opposite side, so it will be mg sine theta. Plus m vt squared over r, or l. And we found vt, we found it was equal to 2 LG sine theta square root. So when we plug that in, we have M times 2 LG sine theta over L. And we combine all of this, and we end up with FT is equal to 3 mg sine theta.